Hey everyone, welcome to another artwork analysis. Now, as promised, I said I was going to study Princess Mononoke, and I will do the first screenshot right now. Now, of course, if you ask me, I could take any screenshot and, from the movie, and I could be able to analyze the intricacies and how great it looks. But for the sake of not making a trillion videos, I will do some of my favorites uh, in the, this one and the next one as well. So in this case, I want to talk about divides and simplification and how they are able to balance such an epic scene by simplifying. Quite simply, Princess Mononoke is a masterpiece that really stands the test of time. Even if you watch it right now, you would really appreciate just how technically brilliant this movie is. And a lot of cases, it's a credit to their layout artists, and of course, um, with in conjunction, in conjunction of their storyboarders and their animators. So basically, your entire studio, of course. So I want to talk about the vibes, first of all. A lot of cases when you are doing epic scenes, you have to take consideration of where your divides are. And what I really am jealous of movie studios and their ability to do is when they are really good at doing uh, cinematography, they have incredible sense of how to use a set dimension on the screen. So what I mean by that is they are forced to have this canvas, this rectangular landscape canvas. As illustrators, we have a bit of leniency. We like let's say you want to make a different size book. Not all canvases have to stay the same. But when it comes to movies, they are forced into this. So their compositions, even if some of them might work better on portrait on a portrait frame, they can't because of course they have to fit on your your TV. So what do they do in order to create this sense of um, this sense of um, uh, how do I say? It? How do they create this sense of scale without having to resort to portrait um, portrait um, canvas? So in this case, we get the sense of height, despite the fact that it, um, chances are we should use a portrait. Uh, canvas traditionally in order to create the sense of verticality. So we get a huge sense of scale here through the divides. Now the divides here are pretty simple. Look at where, actually no, let me start that again. And then the sky is rustling. So what does this really mean? Quite simply, look at how much, or how little space, rather, Ashitaka, this character, is on compared to the rest of the piece. Notice that the ground that he stands on is very, very tiny, whereas the rest of the landscape is huge on the, on the canvas. That means that this particular piece will immediately feel really tall. There's a sense of scale to it. And all due to the fact that the main ground is such a time, it's only taking a very small fraction of the piece. You get to play around with this when it comes to your compositions. Always know where your ground is, even if the ground isn't present in your composition. You want to know and really ha ask yourself why 
you have it that way. And it doesn't have to pertain to ground either. Look at the sky. Look how big the sky is compared... Oh, I need a different color here. Look how big the sky is compared to even the rest of the mountains here. So the mountains are here to the sky. So immediately you kind of get the sense that, oh wow, the sky is so, it's so big in this, this composition. So you get the feeling that this is a, such an epic scene because, well, skies are something that Ghibli likes to utilize in their movies because they give, give a sense of ominous. They give a sense of there's something to explore. There's a greater world out there that we don't even know about. And in this case, there's this particular shot. There's an there's epic music being played while he's on the on the deer or whatever you call it, the elk rather. And you get the feeling that this is a big world. There's an adventure that's about to happen. For this character and it really again the fact that they didn't have to really resort to a portrait a pan shot to create the sense of verticality gives just how masterful even something this simple this fundamental the idea of dividing your composition in such a way that creates the immediate impression and of course in animation you have potentially just a second to create a certain impression. So you want to be able to capture the audience's imaginations right off the bat. So second thing I want to talk about is simplification. So one th key thing to note is when people like to they like to praise Ghibli for something. It tends to be the landscaping. The landscapes, as you can see, can be very complex. And I always say you want to simplify, of course. And why does it seem like Ghibli can get away with these super detailed landscapes for their animation? Very simple. It's because they reverse... They reverse... The, the idea of simplification. The character here is simplified, whereas the rest of the piece is very, is very, very complex. And this allows for a more, this again, is sort of the, if you were to reverse this. So generally when you look at my work or a lot of people's illustrations, the landscapes tend to be simplified and the characters are very complex. So in this case, Ghibli, of course, you can't really animate super painterly complex characters. You could, but you'll probably spend all your budget trying to do so. So Ghibli reverses it. So of course, characters have to be simplified. Therefore, the landscape has to be reversed. Had the landscapes been more simplified, it will start catching too much attention from the character at hand. Some cartoons, I won't name any names, will do this and it never looks good. So in Ghibli's case, it kind of works. Some cartoons, of course, do this in varying degrees. Ghibli just likes to take it super overboard because it's their style. So their landscapes are mega, mega, mega complex. I, don't, I can't emphasize it enough. If you want to study your landscapes, you have to also study how their characters are placed in the frame. Because chances are there's really no focal point when it comes to their landscape. It's so complex. There's no way you can rest on the piece if the character isn't there. So that's really the double-edged sword of making something really complex like this. 
But of course, Ghibli is masterful in how they balance it from animation to the layout on the background. Anyways, hopefully that was helpful. I will analyze one more screenshot after this one. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you next time.